current standards in our education system. I'm the former Frank Key. But the Northwest has to really need somebody different. Your career, you're used to winning a lot. It was everything to us. Seven or eight weeks of two days. They really made me appreciate we're allowed to win. And he's coming in and we'll be shooting the whole time. Let's go back real quick to the, the Enid Walker thing. Of course, we have training in confined space. Legitimately, you know, I could say the tip on that, Steve. Put my hat on and getting out there and doing the job. The television model that you watched growing up. Houston, this is the International Space Station. City Connections begins right now. Hello again, welcome to City Connections. I'm Steve Kime with the City of Enid. Thank you for joining us today. Well, we have a special guest and he's back for a return engagement. Chuck May from AAA Oklahoma is with us. Chuck, good to see you again. Good to see Happy you, Happy summer to you. I Indeed. think we visit around the winter time when there's ice and snow and yeah. good to see you in a casual short sleeve really? summer <laughs> shirt. Put the ice scraper away for now at least. Exactly. Well, speaking of summertime, let's talk a little bit about, uh, you know, cars and safety and and things to do with AAA and, and really summertime. Uh, Chuck, I was doing some little bit of research before our, our visit today, and, and I was reading about there's this window of the, they call it the 100 deadliest days on the highways, and it just really caught my attention when I saw the headline. So I got to reading, and it seemed like it was from Memorial Day to Labor Day, that window that uh, besides a lot of cars being you know, breaking down due to the weather conditions, that it was uh, deadliest due to fatalities. Fatalities. And, and I went on to read that story and it just seemed like between those two major uh, holidays, people are out and about on the highways, but I guess alcohol is a big part of that as well. Oh, Can absolutely. you explain this, this window of 100 days? It's uh, really primarily directed towards teenagers. Okay. For them, they are the deadliest 100 days for a number of reasons. As you say, more people are driving, warm temperatures, no school, in many cases, no work for some of these kids. I'm not sure how they manage that. Uh, but it's a carefree time. Their guard is down, as is with us, too, I believe, as we're traveling in the summer months. Uh, if we're on vacation or a holiday, you know, we're not thinking about going to work and, and, and hitting the grindstone hard. Sure. Uh, we're, uh, I'm not saying that, that our guard is down completely, but we are a little more carefree and, and not really paying as great of attention to limiting distractions, focusing on the road, expecting the unexpected, all these things we talk about year round. In the summertime, it's kind of a, you know, a lazy, crazy, hazy days of summer. And, you know, it's a good time. It's a party time in many cases. And you're just not paying as great a attention. Uh, the warm weather plays a role. Alcohol certainly does play a role. Other drugs, uh, legal and illegal, play a role. Uh, and with the heat, especially with alcohol, you know, fatigue enters into the picture and drowsiness and folks falling asleep at the wheel. Uh, when it's uh, 85, 90 degrees outside, a little bit of alcohol makes you a very sleepy driver. And if you're not ready for that, prepared for that, anticipating that, it can creep up on you and all of a sudden you're a statistic. Sure. Well, I remember reading the article and it was very eye-opening to me about that 100 days. But then uh, it started to all make sense about summer and all the, you know, the in ingredients that you've just shared about longer summer days, more opportunities to be on the road, let's do the vacation thing, let's do a last minute trip to the lake mm -hmm. and the uh, you know, drugs and alcohol involved as well. You know, July 4th is a big holiday, Memorial Day. I think oftentimes Memorial Day, we think about getting in the car and going to see grandma, going to a graveside or just, just travel on Memorial Day. Well, July 4th is one of those as well. One thing that it was interesting that I was reading about these key holidays, especially July 4th, that is one of the biggest days for cars to break down. <laughs> oh, cars to break down, yeah. And also for people to get into crashes. Uh, it's second only to uh, New Year's Eve in yeah. terms of uh, fatality crashes nationwide. Uh, July 4th, right behind New Year's Eve. You don't think necessarily that oh, the two go no. together, but where there's fireworks involved, most of those take place after dark, of course, so you can see them. But then if you have uh, extraneous activities going on, such as alcohol, such as 
you know, marijuana, you know, whatever else is going into the party mix, then uh, after nine o'clock at night, that can be especially dangerous when fatigue, once again, plays a greater role in these crashes. So, but cars breaking down, that's interesting that you mentioned that, Steve, because most people don't realize AAA responds to more calls in the summer for emergency road service than we do in the winter. And that was, excuse me, that was the theme of the article that July 4th was that focal point of the most roadside assistant calls. Yeah. And that may be because of the fourth holiday, but it may be vacations and it may be 120 degrees out too. <laughs> exactly. All those factors rolled into one. You know, we think about ice and snow as being a treacherous time and don't get out. You may have to call AAA if you get stuck. And certainly we do get a lot of calls in the winter time, but more calls in the summer because the heat does such a number on the car. The battery, number one, is put to the We're test. To talk about the battery in a moment. <laughs> when it gets to be that hot, anything yeah. made of rubber, all the liquids under the hood, the coolant, the you know, anything that is uh, susceptible, the weakest link will break when the temperature rises to you know the summertime highs. Well, this will date me, but I remember as a kid growing up watching television that there would be this television commercial, Shell the Answer Man. <laughs> I don't know if you remember that, yeah. but they would... They were promoting to you know to purchase Shell gasoline, but it was Shell the answer man. He had answers to everything, and so I'm looking to you, Mr. AAA Chuck <laughs> May, as the the answer man. And um, so I'm going to ask you kind of two questions here. Number one is, what are some suggestions that you have or AAA has to keep your car in tip top shape? And of the times that I've had to replace a battery in my car, I would say. Uh, five times, I'll just say five, four of them has been during the winter. I had a little hint that I didn't want to start because of the, the winter months. But one time in the summer, the battery just quit and I couldn't believe it. I always, always thought a battery was a cold weather mm -hmm. item, if you will, that it was going to go out. But I remember that lull to start in the, the hot summer. That's a pretty and, sinking feeling. Too. And it's a very sinking feeling, especially when you know need to go from point A to point B. <laughs> So what are the recommended t tips that you have or AAA has uh, in regards to just keeping that car in tip-top shape? Doesn't matter. Summer, fall, winter, spring. Well, and your battery is number one uh, in the winter, certainly, and in the summer as well. Uh, the heat, the corrosion buildup around those terminals, mm -hmm. uh, the jostling, uh, the vibrations that the car undergoes as it's traveling down some of our not so perfect roads, uh, make sure that battery is positioned securely in its mounting brackets and the vibration is kept to a minimum. And then make sure the terminals are clear of all the corrosion that it, it tends to accumulate there. You know, batteries more or less are, are maintenance free. Uh, we don't add water to them like we used to, but they're not lifetime batteries. And so if you have a feeling that your battery may be going out, if it's taking more than to, to get that engine started, if it takes more than four or five of those, you might want to have that battery checked. Remember that sound, folks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> take that with you in the car. I, yeah. But have a good qualified mechanic, uh, auto technician, look at that battery, put it up to the, the tester and see what, what kind of condition it's in. Good rule of thumb is if it's more than two years old, have it checked. Very good. Our special guest today on City Connections, familiar to Enid and also really across the state of Oklahoma, Chuck May with AAA Oklahoma. We appreciate Chuck coming back to uh, the Enid Television Network studios today to really talk about summertime driving and summertime safety trips. Chuck, there was quite some time ago, I remember when my mom was still living and uh, uh, was doing something in the trunk of her car or putting something in her trunk and open up the trunk and inside there was this big old hard case plastic almost like a tool chest kind of deal but it was a safety deal it had jumper cables in it it had kind of a flare thing it had a towing cable and a, it was really the first time that I'd ever seen anything and she had gotten it as a corporate uh, Christmas gift or something yeah. like that and I said mom this is great where'd you get this and she said well I got that at work I really kind of thought, you know, that's pretty smart, Mom, because yeah. you never know that if you're on the side of the road, boy, sure, I wish I had something to tow my car with or I had some kind of a identification. Yeah. But 
are you recommending some kind of safety items, a little toolkit deal to hide in your trunk or in the back of your car for that day that, well, I may need that? Oh, my yes. Yeah, absolutely. You know, if the circumstances were such, you would give your eye teeth or an eye tooth for a Band-Aid or for a, a good working flashlight. Yeah. or for a screwdriver. Yeah. These things we take for granted. Where's the pliers <laughs> when you need them? <laughs> the, yeah, you may have a dozen pairs of pliers around the house, out in the garage, whatever, but yeah. when you're out there 10 miles from home and the clamp comes off the hose connecting to your cooling system, a screwdriver will save your neck. But you know, if you don't have one, there's no substitute. So absolutely, yeah, put those things in the car just in case. It doesn't take up much room. It may be a little bit smaller than your mom's yeah. you know, a big hard cased one. You can put all of them into a small little she gym had bag. She super deluxe model, oh, I that's, think. But that's great. The yeah. more things, the better. But certainly yeah. your jumper cables, you want to have those in there. And know how to use them. There is a right way and there is a wrong way to hook those things up. So jumper cables, good working flashlight, working being the operative word there, with maybe extra batteries. The time to find out your flashlight doesn't work isn't when it's 10 o'clock at night and you're trying to see something under the hood and it, you know you turn it on and nothing you, happens. You must be looking over my shoulder because the other <laughs> evening I need the flashlight and I go to the counter and I get the flashlight and of course it wasn't going to work. So yeah, it worked uh, fine six months ago. Yeah. What happened? Yeah, what happened? So. <laughs> my special guest today on City Connections, Chuck May, and we're going to talk about uh, Oklahoma and its ranking as one of the worst states when it comes to impaired driving. We'll talk a little bit about that. They also offer a tipsy toe. We'll find out if that's still uh, on the go. And also we'll talk crayons before we end the show today. So again, thank you for joining us on City Connections. We'll have more with Chuck May right after this. Welcome back to our summer edition, if you will, of uh, I guess just summer driving tips. Special guest today on City Connections, Chuck May from Oklahoma City and AAA Oklahoma. Chuck, we were talking a little bit about my mom's uh, safety kit that she had in her trunk, and that's a kind of a common sense thing to do. Is there anything else that you wanted to add to uh, the safety kit? Well, we talked about the jumper cables and a good working flashlight, but a first aid kit for yourself, okay. like we said, you know, Band-Aid, sure. when you need one, there's no substitute. And a first aid kit for your car as well, Steve. Maybe some pliers, vice grips, duct tape, screwdriver, and then paper towels. They come in handy in a variety of situations. Maybe some snacks. I always carry, well, my car is 10 years old. It's a pretty reliable vehicle, but it is 10 years old. I carry a couple of uh, quarts of motor oil with me wherever I go. Maybe a gallon of water, stick that in there too. Uh, and of course, in the winter time, ice scraper, snow sure. brush, these kinds of things. But you know, it's just a matter of putting those things in a bag, in a little gym bag or whatever, sticking it in the trunk of the car, and then you don't have to worry about it. Right, you know, and the, this, this bag's for summer or this bag's for winter because yeah. how many of us wanted to scrape some ice thinking, oh wow, that ice scraper's back in the garage. I forgot to put it back in, so it happens. Then you're reaching for your credit card. Yeah. Chuck, this is a topic that's not very pleasant, uh, but, but you do offer, AAA Oklahoma offers a pleasant service called Tipsy Toe. And I was reading some of the research. I don't know if the number has changed, but it said in 2010, of course, that's six years ago, plus seven years ago, said Oklahoma ranked 46th in the worst state for impaired driving. It's not yeah. a very important or, excuse me, impressive statistics that we want to talk much about, so we'll leave that bad news alone. But tell us about how Tipsy Toe works. Well, Tipsy Toe is a program where uh, Enid's involved, Lawton, Ardmore, Shawnee, Tahlequah, Muskogee, Metropolitan, Oklahoma City, Metropolitan, Tulsa. Uh, uh, I believe that's the list of the cities. There's nine of them across the state, where if you break down over a major holiday, uh, and you need a tow, certainly you can call AAA. That's part of your AAA membership. But if, you, if your car's fine, but you don't feel like you're able to drive, if you break down after drinking 
then we'll come and get you and get you a tow uh, and get you home safe and sound. It's called Tipsy Tow and it's open to AAA members and non-members alike. It's over the major holidays, certainly the you know Memorial Day, Labor Day, July 4, Thanksgiving, Christmas, Cinco de Mayo, Super Bowl Sunday, St. Patrick's Day. Anytime when people are being out uh, partying, with friends or at a restaurant, at a bar, and they just feel unsafe behind the wheel after drinking, we'll come and get them and their car, take them home, no charge, AAA member or not. They just call our main AAA okay. dispatch number, which is 1-800-AAA-HELP, and say, I need a tipsy tow. We'd rather, it's a little expensive for us, but we'd rather get you home safely than to have you take a chance and climb behind the wheel and roll sure. the dice and get sure. into trouble. Chuck, a few months ago, I had the privilege of visiting with the, the Commissioner of Public Safety for Oklahoma, Michael Thompson, yeah. and uh, Michael and I discussed uh, the NDUI program a little bit, and I was also uh, texting while driving, and I want to read this, uh, it said, almost 70% of teens admit to talking on a cell phone while driving. More than 50% admit to texting while driving. So. From, from your perspective, how are we doing, how are Oklahomans doing on this text and driving bill? We're not doing very well. Uh, it's an epidemic, it still is. We have a law, it's against the law to text and drive. The enforcement is difficult um, for a number of reasons. We're starting to come around to some better enforcement techniques, uh, educating the troopers and the city police mm -hmm. on how they can spot these kinds of uh, egregious activities behind the wheel. It, it's so distracting to be texting while driving. Because typically you're looking down, your hands are off the wheel, your eyes are off the road, and your mind is certainly is not on driving. And you've already gone a football field down the road yeah. in length. And we all know crashes can happen yeah. in the blink of an eye. That child can be chasing that ball out into the street before he can say Jack Robinson. Uh, that car that you think is gonna wait sure. until you pass before turning left, may decide to turn left in front of you. So you have to really pay attention. These days, more than ever, there's more cars on the road, more drivers on the road, more dangerous driving scenarios, high-speed merging, distracted driving. I mean, it, the list goes on and on, and we're only adding to that list as we add distractions within the cockpit of the car. I don't know what it says about me personally, or I'll put my wife in this category too, personally. But we're to the point now that if we're at an intersection, the light's green, the car's not moving, I will say, or my wife will say, yeah, they're texting, or they're on the phone. <laughs> on the phone. Or we see someone on a line and we're getting ready to pass them, and I'll say, uh, they're probably on their phone. And so when we drive by, they're on their phone. We've been kind of noticing some of these uh, you know dangerous scenarios out there with people texting and driving at the mm -hmm. same time so please tell well, me I'm not the only one that says yeah they're probably on their phone they're well, not paying they're not driving <laughs> you're exactly right and it's such a temptation I guess that's a problem with you know you're driving down the road and, and you hear that ding which means you have a text that just came Gotta in. Look. Gotta it's look. so tempting. Yeah. Oh, that might be something really important. Maybe it's my wife saying that I need to get home right away. The house is on fire. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Well, typically it's not, thankfully. But it's such a. Uh, it's like a trampoline in the backyard. It's an attractive nuisance, yeah. and it's hard to ignore it. Yeah. You really have to just put that cell phone in the glove compartment, put it in the back seat, put it out of your mind completely, and let people know. Don't try to reach me while I'm driving. I will not respond. We opened the show today talking a little bit about the, the 100 days during the summer months, or at least from Memorial Day to late September, about uh, the number of accidents that take place. And you, you mentioned that was really focusing more on, on the younger drivers, if you will, which leads to this question here. When I was doing the research, it said motor vehicle crashes are a leading cause of death among 15 to 20-year-olds. So what, what recommend, uh, recommendations do you have for that teen's first car? Well, yeah, teens, of course, are eight feet tall and bulletproof. It'll yeah, never happen cool. to them. They're the ones that can roll the dice, come out smelling like a rose. It's always the other guy. And I think maybe that's a teenage problem, but in some regards, it's all of ours problem because so far I have not been killed in a car crash, either of you. We may be the ones that are gonna beat the odds and we can do those dangerous things and get away with it. Well, if you read the newspaper, if you keep track of the highway uh, safety offices statistics, 
many, many people are not beating the odds. Mm -hmm. And we have seven to 800 people every year in Oklahoma not beat those odds. And nationally, the numbers are going up in terms of traffic collisions causing fatalities, not down like they had been for a couple of years. 2016 saw the number rise, which is of great concern though those of us in traffic safety. There are a number of things you can do to minimize your risk behind the wheel because these crashes are preventable. Chuck, as an overprotective father at one time with my daughter, she uh, learned to drive with a smaller car, but my mindset is I wanted this big 18, 19 foot Mercury Lincoln or <laughs> some, some aircraft carrier size car for her to drive because I wanted as much car around her as possible being that overprotective dad, even though she learned in a small compact car. Mm -hmm. And I got to thinking she couldn't handle not that she couldn't handle, but she had difficulty in driving those big old monster Oldsmobiles. No, no reflection of Oldsmobile, because I was a proud owner of, of a few of those. But it wasn't practical for her to have this big old four-door car, if you will. Yeah. Um, we live in America. We have all kinds of choices. We can choose to drive SUV to a VW to whatever. But is there any guidance? Does the National Highway traffic safety or AAA, do they have any guidance to help parents to say, you know, this is probably a safe choice of the size of automobile for a 16 year old to have behind the yeah. wheel? I think a mid-size sedan is just about perfect. Uh, a Camry, for example, or a Corolla, or a Taurus, uh, Impala, a mid-size sedan that does provide the protection with additional steel but is not so small that they're in jeopardy and they're not vulnerable yeah. as they're heading down the highway. Uh, a car such as this will have most of the modern safety features, certainly the side airbags, uh, the automatic braking systems, uh, side impact, uh, maybe the lane avoidance systems, sure. uh, that little light comes on, et cetera. And more and more of these vehicles, these kinds of uh, ideas are being incorporated into the car as standard equipment, which is a great thing. I mean, on the one side, you know, the auto industry giveth, and then the auto industry taketh away because they're giving us all these safety benefits, all this great new technology, but then they're taking it away because they're adding the GPS and they're adding the, the Bluetooth and all these entertainment distractions that lead us down the other path of unsafe driving. So it's a balancing, but really it's up to that one component that is the most dangerous in the entire car, and that's the nut behind the wheel. <laughs> it's up to that person to modify behavior and take advantage of those tools that are out there for them to be as safe as possible and to minimize their risk and survive driving. It's not an easy task. Well, it can be a sensitive topic to even recommend a, an automobile for a 16 year old or whatever, because by golly, we live in America and we're in Oklahoma <laughs> and if we want a pickup truck or if we want a monster truck or whatever, we're not, we're not promoting any type of vehicle, but we're just talking about uh, making some common sense decisions to be safe. Well, let me tell you a couple of things here. One, you know, the pickups are safe vehicles, but they tend to be driven in such a way that make them unsafe. Uh, the three leading causes of crashes in Oklahoma, typically on state highways, on county roads, are the vehicle leaves the roadway, mm -hmm. the vehicle is a one vehicle collision, or in a rollover. And typically young drivers of pickups, I'm afraid to say, tend to drive that vehicle in such a way that causes them to be a dangerous vehicle. They'll take curves way too fast. They'll brake and try to get back on the highway and, and wind up you know, running off the road into a, into a ditch. If you read those traffic reports, so many crashes occur when the vehicle crosses the center line and hits another vehicle head on. It goes off the side of the road and overturns. And these are all things that can be easily remedied. A little bit of paying attention, getting the big picture, keeping your eyes sure. moving, minimizing your risk. Chuck May, AAA Oklahoma is our special guest today on City Connection. We're going to talk a little bit about what to do if you get caught in a hailstorm out on the interstate or on, on any road here in Oklahoma. Traveling with your pet, and we want to update on the Crayon uh, Project, if you will. All that is coming up right after this on City Connections. Thanks for staying with us.
Welcome back, City Connections. Thank you for staying with us today as we talk about uh, safe uh, driving tips uh, really throughout the year here in Oklahoma with our special guest, return guest, Chuck May of AAA Oklahoma. Chuck, I remember coming back from, uh, my wife and I was coming back from Stillwater, a uh, Special Olympics Oklahoma event. It was late one night. And uh, it was during May, I believe, and oh, we just got rained on and hailed on and rained and just, it was quite an ordeal. So we get close to Edmond and the hail is the size of baseball. Mm. I mean, it's just beating the daylights out of everything in sight, including the car. Don't know how safe this was, but it was so dangerous to be on the road that we finally found, and it had just started, we found an overpass, we pulled underneath the overpass, but we pulled way over as far as we could. And seriously, it was raining so hard, you probably couldn't see a car length. And then you saw a car pull behind you, and it was just, it was just so dangerous. What do people do when they're caught in an instance like that? You did the right thing. The only thing that I would recommend is you not do that if there's tornadoes. If there's any chance of twisters coming in the area, the one place you don't want to be is okay. under an underpass uh, or under an overpass because it'll suck you right out of there. But in, in case of hail, great place to be, you bet, if there's no danger of tornadoes in the area. Uh, you certainly want to stay in the car because those hailstones, you know, get popped on the head with one of those. I'd rather, you know, have my windshield be, you know, blown out or, or the dents in the, in the hood of the car or the top roof, but stay in the car maybe with your head facing away from the windshield or away from any windows that might shatter and just ride it out. We were just so thrilled to get under that overpass, but we were thankful, uh, selfishly, I guess, that we were the first yeah. because everybody else was trying to do the same thing oh, later absolutely. on. absolutely. Yeah. Let's spend just a quick minute on this, Chuck, because our time is just about gone today. Traveling with your pets, summertime, people are taking their pets on vacation. Uh, you see some of these pets halfway hanging out the, the window, yeah. uh, letting the hair blow and stuff like that. But <laughs> the recommended way is probably to have your dog in a, on, on a leash, maybe attached to a seat, so they don't go flying forward or something, right? In a little doggy car seat. Okay. You're exactly right, Steve. We call that driving under the influence of dogs. Because your dog, and we all love our dogs, yep. we all want our dogs right here all yep. the time, and they want to have their nose out the window. And you, and you see that as well, and you're driving down the road, there's oh, this... continually, and more so now than ever before, I think. But in the event of a crash, that dog becomes an unguided missile, yeah. injuring him or herself, as well as passengers in the car. So really, if you take your dog regularly in, you know, in the car, have a little doggy car seat for them. You know, they make them for all breeds. Back seat is best, of course, if you can afford to, you know, and put up with the dis inconvenience of having your dog in the back seat. Uh, but it's safest for the dog and safer for you too. Well, we close our visit and thank you for coming up today from the city. Uh, but give us an update on the crayon project. I was so impressed with the fact to learn that of the small crayons that you don't know what to use or you can't use them anymore, that there was a gentleman that was gathering up these through AAA, gathering up those, melting them down or whatever, but giving them to uh, Children's Hospital. It's, is, it's that, called, is that close to the truth oh, story? Very, very good, yeah. It's called the Crayon Initiative. Okay. And he collects crayons, used crayons, unwanted crayons. He melts them down according to color and reforms them into square crayons, gives them then to children in children's hospitals around the state. They're square so they don't roll off the hospital table. Yeah. And it brightens the lives of these you know, sure. poor kids up there you know, having all kinds of procedures. And we collect them at our AAA offices around the state. Lyle Nickel here at Enid on West Owen Gary at 215 West Owen Gary will take your crayons okay. and we'll direct those to the Crayon Initiative. They'll be right recycled, keep them out of the landfills and put smiles on kids' faces. Very good. And I like the square mindset of keeping them from rolling off the table. Yeah. So well, just like Shell the Answer Man, <laughs> Chuck May of AAA Oklahoma is our, is our answer man on safe driving tips uh, for this summer and, and really year round. So Chuck, thanks for being with us here at the ETN studio today and you're welcome back and uh, we'll, we'll talk more. Keep everybody Look safe. Look forward to it. Thanks, okay. Dave. Thank you. And thank you for joining us again on City uh, Connections. I hope you enjoy many of the topics. I hear a lot from you from time to time of uh, some of the interviews. Uh, a gentleman just the other day said, I really learned so much about John Groendyke in that interview. So that's the whole idea, to bring you guests that are enlightening. They're all about Oklahoma and all about Enid. And 
uh, we're glad that you're enjoying these programs. And thank you for joining us. I'm Steve Kine with the City of Enid. And uh, until next time, make it a great day. And drive safely, everyone.